Now I'm trying to make this video really special. And let me tell you why. I'm trying to make it so if your engine doesn't run, you can get it started. And this is the best way to do it. Now typically when your engine isn't running, you just wanna replace the fuel pump, the ignition coil, spark plug, spark plug wires, um, everything you can before you know you start researching on Google and then you find something on Google, then they tell you to replace the special part and it still doesn't work. This video will help you do a step-by-step -step process. Now for me, my engine was turning over and it wasn't even starting at all. And what we ended up doing is testing to see if there's any spark and there was no spark because the three things you need is spark, compression, and fuel. A lot of times your safety switch can just be falling off just barely and um, you gotta make sure that this is correctly on. Now finding a technician's manual is crucial. Planet Nautique provides all of these manuals. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. This is just a really good website. Go to Planet Nautique and then click on the manual section on the top. And then you wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom. And for me specifically, I'm gonna click on the GT40 engine. But if you have a different engine, click on that one and download it and the process will be the same. Even if you have a different engine manufacturer, if you have a Mastercraft or Taiga or whatever, you'll be able to find this on the website and download it and the process will be the exact same. So for the GT40 engine, we have the PCM table of contents here. I just kind of want to get you familiar with it so you're not overwhelmed. And this is the uh, engine, electronic engine control unit. This is that big unit on the back there that uh, you see on the back of the engine. Now. They have all these big crazy tools at the beginning of the manual and I'm showing these to you because I don't want you to be alarmed. The one thing you really do need is the digital volt and ohmmeter, but you don't need all these crazy tools to do some diagnosing. And then I also called the local Nautique dealer and they didn't even have this star tester. This star tester is everywhere on this manual, so go ahead and ignore it. Now let's go ahead to the diagnostic symptoms and see exactly where we should start. Now we can go to the diagnostic routines. Chart one is no crank. Ours cranks over, so that's not us. Hard start, it doesn't even start, so that's not even us. Chart three, stalls after starting, stalls at idle. No, ours doesn't even start, it just cranks for a long time. Chart four, no start, normal crank, that's totally us. And remember the quick test, we don't have that tool and the local dealer in Sacramento doesn't have one either. So we're gonna ignore that and just go to section three F. So step one is asking us if we use the quick test procedures and we can't just because of that special tool that no one really has. If you have it, that's really good. Um, so we'll go to the second one and just do it manually, which is check for a good battery. And you just wanna check the voltage. And if it's yes, then you just go to 3F1-3, which is just the next one. And uh, you can see here that we have uh, over 12 volts, so we're good there. Now to the next step. Now for the sake of your guys' time, I'm just going to skip to a couple of these just to show you the process, but you want to go through each individual step and answer yes or no. Now I skipped a 3F1-9 for you, and make sure you just have a voltage there when the key is on the on position, and I do, so we're good to go. Now you get into the brains of the computer. And what you have to do is remove this little rubber piece down here and just loosen it with the 10 millimeter to get to the 60 pin connector. Now once unplugged, you have this very scary connector. It's not scary at all, but really it's just 60 pins and it's really easy to follow. Now on the other side here, it shows the numbers and this is number one. And then this goes all the way up to 20. This is 21, goes all the way up to 40, and then 41, and goes all the way up to 60. 
In the manual, they talk about a breakout board just to make it easier so the pins are a lot bigger. But go ahead and use a uh, voltmeter here and look at the uh, specific pins that you have. You can go ahead and attach them in here and test out the correct voltages for each pin. Once I did that, I found that there was an incorrect. There was zero volts. Now I slowly worked my way all the way down to 3F1-14. Check for switched B plus at ECA. Now that sounds really scary. Just follow the step-by-step -step procedure. And I went to the lowest bullet point and it says, is the voltage present at both pins 37 and 57 with key switch on? And I answered no. And that brought me down to the next step, which I had to replace the relay. Once I did that, I found there were zero volts. I did exactly what the flowchart said and replaced the relay. I found a relay at Napa. It's not the waterproof one. I will get a new one, but just to test it out and make sure it worked before I order the new one, I uh, tested it out and it worked flawlessly. Following this manual is crucial to your success to get back on the water as soon as possible. It's a simple method because the engineers actually designed this. It's not a forum with people's opinions. It's really actually fairly simple to do. Now go ahead and download the manual and read it, look it over, ask a lot of questions, and do it. And of course, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Push that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.